Hey everyone, meteorologist Austin Onik at home taking care of some business for getting dinner ready for the family before everybody gets here. Now the cool thing about this is that yes, I'm a scientist and that yes, it's very cool to try new things and this is something for all of you, excuse me a second, there we go. If you're going to be trying something like this at home, great opportunity to learn something new. I've heard a lot of people say that they can't bake, they mess everything up, that it's just not possible for them to do anything other than boil water. This right here, I've talked about it before, it's one of my favorite recipes. It's from the Nero Wolf cookbook, The Master Detective. If you'd like to know more, I'll be posting it in the comments section below. But here's what you need to make Fritz's bread, and you cannot screw this recipe up. Believe me, I've tried. If you'd like to take, make a nice loaf of white bread at home in the oven that tastes delicious with soups or stews, this is what you want to do, so stay tuned for more. Okay, yes, it's a mess, forgive me, but I've just made a couple of loaves for ourselves. We're donating a loaf or two to a family in need that could use some help going through some medical issues. You want to use the dough hook on this attached to a mixer of some sort. If you don't have that, it's very cathartic to be able to kind of mix things out a little bit with your bare hands. That does kind of come in handy. Okay, to make this, you need at least one. Three, four, five. Let's see, that's half, and one more half added into that. There is six cups of flour. All right, one and one half tablespoons of butter softened or melted and then cooled off by just a little bit. So it's something you can take in for there. It comes in very handy to do something like that, a part of the recipe. Okay, now while the butter's heating up, you want to try to get the water, the tap water coming out. You need a quarter cup of the water. I try to put in just a little bit more than that so that you have a little bit more to spare just in case. This will be to make your yeast in, so a good opportunity to activate your yeast before you put it in there. All right, this recipe calls for three teaspoons, which is about one tablespoon's worth, and if you'd like to use this, again, just a little bit more will help. You put this into the water, stir it around, and get it activated for about five minutes or so, and you should have your yeast about ready to go. Your butter should be nicely melted at this point in time, so taking your butter over to your dough mixture and make certain that is in there to try to scrape the rest out of that later. And then into a nice warm area, you leave that into there and put about five minutes on the timer to make certain that it is able to grow, to grow properly on there. Okay, two teaspoons of salt. That's one. Whoops, okay, a little bit less left on there. That's almost two at this point in time. Hang on a second. Okay, two tablespoons of sugar. I always get these two mixed up. It's always great to make certain that you have these separated and ready to go, but two teaspoons of salt, two tablespoons of sugar. Okay, two cups of milk. You can warm this up if you want to. It sometimes works a little bit better that way. Okay, and... Number two, I'm going to put just a little bit extra in there since I didn't have quite enough in there for all of that. So just a splash more. Occasionally I add a little bit of extra ingredients here just to be on the safe side. Right, so some people crazy for that mixture right there. Go ahead and turn the go on, on or just go ahead and start mixing it with your handy dandy spatula, something like that, that you're able to make certain that it all gets mixed in pretty well. You don't want to mix it all the way through just yet because you're going to still going to be adding the water and the uh, yeast in just a little bit. So you're going to have to wait for that coming up here in just a little bit. We'll check on that here next. Okay, while that is kneading over there and doing pretty nicely over in the corner, this is the main course for tonight. This is going to be 
our minestrone soup, which we make in this giant vat because my kids have a tendency to inhale most of everything. So if you'd like to give this a try, great opportunity to get a really nice kind of meatless Monday, Tuesday, whenever vegetable soup going on in here. And it's pretty good, again, all the way on through with one extra secret ingredient, but I'm not going to tell you that because that's chef's priority right there. Now, looking over here, we are seeing, again, the bread finally starting to kind of come together and looking pretty nice, so we're going to stop this. Okay, now one of the best things you can do is have a place. There are the two loaves that I've already made up and are ready to go for later on. They're starting to rise. I've already warmed up another pan, and I've got another couple of pans up here. I hope we make a couple of different loaves, if at all possible. Probably just use the one for right now, but you want to have that warm place having your oven on by just a little bit, a couple of minutes at about a couple hundred degrees, and turn it off, and it'll be nice and warm for these things to rise. Okay, so now everything is done over here for the most part, so you can go ahead and take the dough hook off and make certain that everything is off the dough hook because you're going to need all that dough coming up here in just a little bit. You should wind up with something that looks kind of like this. A good opportunity, again, to show a little bit more about what making bread dough is all about, and this is going to be, again, what this looks like. We're going to divide this in half. We're going to put one into our, uh, our glass case that's already in the oven, and the other one is going to go into the silicon pan here in just a little bit. Okay, now back to the cabinet again. We've halved our recipe and have, again, one half of the bread dough here. Again, if you had a bad day at work, if there's something you need to do to calm down or you just need to get a little bit of exercise in your day while you're putting this together, kneading the dough is a very good way to kind of relieve stress. It's kind of like its own homemade stress ball right about here. A good opportunity, again, to kind of get your hands into your work and instead of picking up the dough at the store, good opportunity to make your own. You need to make it into about a roughly an eight inch dough pan. Again, size roughly is going to be rising from there. And just a little bit of a coat of flour, just to put it a little bit on the dry side there. We will then take our warmed up pan from the oven, place that in there, kind of mush it down by just a little bit. You're mashing out some of the gas, the carbon dioxide gas that will be rising in there. And yes, I am skipping a couple of steps that is in the recipe below. You can follow that if you want to. This usually works for me, but for all the purists out there, if you want to follow along, that is again going to be something that you need to take into account to find out more about how this works for you. But either way, this is usually very easy to put together. So now we've got one ready to go in here, and the second one ready to go as well. So once again, just kneading it by just a little bit into a rough loaf shape somewhere in there making certain that you tuck kind of the crevices back and underneath on this stretching it out by just a little bit into around a roughly eight to nine inch long lump of dough a little bit of flour to kind of dry things off by just a little bit and this is a silicon pan won't burn in the oven won't melt but it will kind of deform by just a little bit, so you want to make certain that you put this in and kind of conform it to the shape as much as you are possibly able to do so. So something else to consider there once you put this in. All right, that is about it for right now. We're going to be putting this in here to see how this goes, and seeing again we've got one, two, three, four. Two of those are going to be for us, and the other two are going to be for the family uh, that we are making part of the minestrone and the bread for. So we'll be making that and seeing how those come out in just a little bit. Join me back here in about an hour. Give it about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to rise. And that will help to, again, make certain that they turn out decently fluffy. So we'll be back here in just about an hour, but about a couple of seconds for you watching this. Okay, it's been about an hour or so, and as you can see, we're doing quite nicely on the bread. The ones we made later are taking a little while longer to rise, but not doing too bad, so we're looking pretty good on all counts. And it looks like it's a good time to go ahead and fire things up. So let's go ahead and get things going here for this evening. And if you're going to be, again, following the instructions here... Yes, I know I'm getting there. Just hang on a second. Okay, now usually get it up to about 375 if I can get that taken care of there and there we go all right heating up now so we should be ready to go here in just a little bit how's the minestrone doing you ask great question and looks like things are doing 
quite nicely indeed. No major problems at all. Very warm. The noodles are in and everything is ready to go. And we'll be back here in about an hour or so to see how the bread turns out. So stay tuned and bon appetit. Alrighty, let's see what the finished product looks like here. Apologies if the camera falls over by just a little bit, but let's see how we're doing here. That one looks like it turned out pretty well. Nice and steamy. Take a look over there. Everything's pretty well set right in place and looking pretty good. You can see the size of the loaf comes out to be not exactly what you would get out of the supermarket, but you do have, again, a pretty good size for there. Let's go ahead and take loaf number two out and let it cool down for just a little bit. These will be the ones that my family will be devouring in the course of the next hour or so, but we're not going to be seeing too much of anything, and that one having some difficulty coming out, so we'll give it a little bit of some assistance. Yes, I did spray this down earlier, but occasionally they do need a little bit of help getting out, so you may have to destroy just a little bit part of the loaf. But once it comes out, it'll look pretty good all the way on through. And if it doesn't, like this one just did, great to see that taking place. As Julia Child always said, well, bon appetit, that's what happens to some of these loaves. And fortunately, this one turned out to have a little bit of a problem with the crust coming off, but we'll save that for either a garnish or just leaving it out there for right now. So not doing too bad overall. Picking up some pretty good amounts of bread for this evening. And again, looking pretty good all the way on through. This is about what it's going to be coming out as. And if you're going to be, again, uh, making more than one loaf, again, the recipe, you can double that up pretty easily all the way on through, and this will be about what it looks like. Now, as for taste purposes, I really can't describe this to you. I would really like to, but the best thing you can possibly do is give this thing a fry for yourself. I mean, it's really, really good. It goes very good with, again, soups and casseroles and stuff like that, so your best opportunity would be to Give us a try as soon as possible. This is honestly one of the easiest bread recipes I've ever done. Don't need the bread maker machine. You can do it all yourself. And again, it takes a couple of hours. It's not going to be, again, easy as pushing a couple of buttons. You are going to have to get a couple of things finished up yourself. But the results are very much worth it. So trust me on this one. You're asking, I know, how the minestrone turned out. Well, it's starting to boil up on the end right there and doing pretty nice all the way around. Not expecting to see a lot of this left over into the course of the rest of the evening when my kids and my wife get home and of course we'll be donating about half of this whatever you want to call it soup terrine pot all the way on through. That'll be going to a family who's got some lung ailments going on and we'll be donating that for their dinner coming up in just about a day or so so hopefully they'll be enjoying that and they get two loaves of the fritz's bread as well want to make certain they get the entire experience there that right there is my job as chef of house onic to keep everybody fed and that's what's on the menu board for tonight hopefully you've enjoyed the presentation of fritz's bread recipe i hope you have a chance to give it a try seriously give it a try. It is worth it, very much so, because this is one of those things that is one of those recipes that's very hard to screw up in the first place, and once again, it is just absolutely worth it. I have brought in from the house on a kitchen. I'm a meteorologist off and on. Rudely talking with my mouth full, but it's Fritz's bread. Can you blame me? More updates on forecast and what's coming up on the recipe board at House Onic later. Thanks for joining me tonight for a complete presentation of what's going on with the bread. You want something? You want something? Say something. Arf. Arf. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Oh, okay, fine. Thanks for joining me tonight.